Hi, I'm Rahul, reporting from the Fun Robotics Network, and with me here is Team 23251, who've had an amazing day at, the San at their San Diego Meet 2, with a very high OPR, an impressive claw intake system using a limelight, a claw transfer, and some passively sprung hooks. Learn more about their amazing robot on Behind the Bar. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you, and also in partnership with the following. The new Robit system by Anymark can reduce complexity and enable robust builds. Parts align to a common one half inch grid, simplifying construction and allowing alignment of both structure and motion components. Robits enables teams to always have the parts they need to complete a build. Head on over to Anymark.com slash Robits to learn more in order today. Go ad free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad-free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the join button below to get started. Okay, why don't you bring me in to show some of your drivetrain? Sure, so last year we went for the full 18 by 18 inch kind of thing. Um, this year we decided we wanted to be more fa like fast and maneuverable, and so we decided to shrink that down to 14 by 14 inches, keeping it really small. Um, so to achieve this, we uh, obviously had to switch from our GoBuilder drivetrain to uh, the parallel plate. So we have a parallel plate here, um, and uh, we're running just standard mechanism with uh, 435s gearing down uh, 6 to 5 for that higher higher top speed. And uh, we also have these odometry pods, uh, same ones we were running last year, except this year they've been slightly upgraded. They have metal plates rather than plastic ones, so they're a bit more rigid. Um, so I think we can move on from that. Thank you so much. It's a really compact and unique drivetrain. And why don't you show me more about some of your intake system using that limelight camera? Uh, sure. So we decided this year to go for the kind of standard architecture. We got uh, two slides. Um, uh, we saw a lot of teams be very successful with this last year, so we decided we were going to kind of replicate that. And uh, so our horizontal slides has our intake. Um, the intake is a claw. Um, we kind of uh, decided on this very early season and haven't changed it much since then. And then to facilitate actually lining that intake up, instead of having the driver do it, we decided that we were gonna have some computer vision run here. And the reason for that is uh, driver input can be imprecise. A uh, computer vision is pretty much always pretty accurate. And so we have been using that and it's been going really well for us. This also allows us to intake more reliably in auto. And so overall it's been a good decision. Well, wow, that's really cool. I think it's really impressive that teams are using that new Limelight camera that was released this year. What advice would you have for some new teams that are trying to implement Limelight into their autonomous and tell you as well? So uh, ha give yourself a lot of time to work with it. It's um, There are some issues. It's a bit of an early stage product at the moment. Uh, so definitely give yourself time to work through those. And also um, make sure to update the software to whatever latest version is currently available because uh, the one they ship it with is not perfect. Great, that's really cool about your intake. Why don't you lead into some of your transfer system and if you can show some of that functionality. Sure, so our uh, transfer is pretty basic. Uh, one claw just kind of gives it off to the other claw, this claw closes, this claw closes, and then this can come out and we can score on the high, high basket, low basket, or we have this extra degree of freedom here, the pivot, which allows us to score our specimens on the higher or low rung. Nice, that's really cool. And I think for a lot of teams, getting their transfer consistent and not having their um, their claw, their claw, samples fall into their robot, which can have a big impact on the rest of the match. How, how much iteration has gone into this transfer design? Has it just been a lot of CAD or have you gone through a lot of different claw transfers? And talk more about that. Yeah, so mostly, uh, this was mostly designed CAD. I um, designed this for early season. It's been the same. We had sort of a early season bot that was not quite as good as this one. And then we kind of just carried the same system over to this and it's been working out fine. Um, and uh, basically we haven't really changed much about it. It's been pretty reliable. Uh, one thing we did add this league meet, um, we, to stop samples from getting stuck inside our robot, added a little bit of a top cover here um, over our uh, wiring. But other than that, not much has changed about this and it's been pretty consistent. Nice, yeah, that, that transfer setup seems really clean and reliable. Now, why don't you talk more about some of your passively sprung hooks and how that leads you to score that level two ascent? So very early season, we decided that level two ascent was probably the most we were gonna get with our robot, um, as to get level three, you need a pretty complicated system. And at that point, you're probably adding more weight to your robot, sacrificing your sample cycle times. So we decided we wanted to just go for a level two. So um, we looked at what the world champions from last year did, uh, Clueless, uh, they had these hooks that were sprung with bungee cord. So we kind of replicated that with uh, surgical tubing instead because that's what we had. Um, now, one thing we noticed is that due to the presence of a bottom bar uh, that wasn't there last year, obviously when you're climbing to that uh, truss rung, um, what we had to do is get the hooks to fold um, in order to actually get below that bar because um, 
without that, the robot would just, just kind of brace against the bottom and wouldn't actually fall through and we wouldn't score the ascent. Nice, yeah, I know getting over that second bar has been something that's gone through a lot of rule changes. The first bar has gone through a lot of rule changes and things like that. And how, how much effort, how much time have you guys spent in like tuning these, the lengths of the hang hooks, the power of the bungee cords and things like that? Um, for the power of the bungee cords, uh, one of our uh, one of our um, sophomore members uh, designed um, these nice little tensioners that can be really easily adjusted. So we've just been using that to regulate that. It's been pretty consistent and reliable. Um, and in terms of getting the folding lengths right, um, we calculated this in CAD. We knew our CG is somewhere about here. And so we just split the hook down that and it's been working fine. Nice. That's really cool. And now, is there anything you would like to add about how your autonomous works or any software programs you guys would like to add? So um, our autonomous has gone through a lot of iteration. So we started off with uh, a one plus four, I believe. And we, we always knew that we wanted to have some sort of uh, submersible intake during our autonomous. And this is definitely helped by the fact that we early on decided that we wanted to go with the limelight because that meant that it was gonna be a lot easier to intake from the submersible. And, but then later on, when some other teams started showing off like a, a six sample instead, we thought about it a little bit more and we realized that it, it was actually a strategic benefit to go for a zero plus six because what would, what would happen is a lot of teams would focus on one or the other and would need like the second uh, the second specimen for their auto. And that's the reason why we decided to build a zero plus six for this meet. And then additionally, we also improved our uh, specimen from last time. Uh, this robot was never actually initially designed to use specimen, but we were able to push it to be able to do specimen pretty consistently and be able to push it to do uh, five plus zero, although that's not entirely consistent yet. So that's still a work in progress. Yeah, now another thing about your specimen auto, I've seen that you guys have opted to have the sample on the ground while other teams have had it on the wall. What decisions led to play into that idea? Uh, so the main decision behind that was uh, we just couldn't get this claw to rotate low enough to intake off the wall um, the way it's been designed. And we already knew we had vision alignment, which was probably better than what we could do with um, having the human player line it up by the clip, which can sometimes be a little bit you know, sketchy. So we decided that we were going to intake off the floor. So robot's designed to do that. And it passes through the uh, specimens just fine. And with this extra pivot degree of freedom, we can score them uh, pretty reliably. So we haven't had any issues. Great, that's really great. Now, one last question. You guys' sample cycles are really amazing in the tell period. You're, you're, you clearly spent a lot of time into driver practice. And what recommendations would you have to other teams? Like they've got their robot ready, but they just need to practice it and optimize it. What recommendations do you have to improve those cycle times? So one thing I would definitely say for certain is look at what actions your driver is doing during the cycle. So we kind of analyzed that really extensively and we found a lot of times where uh, the driver was pressing unnecessary buttons or like doing some unnecessary action that put a mental strain on them. So we decided that we could use this, we try to use as much software as possible to try to uh, mitigate those things. For example, if uh, Curl here drives backwards, the slides will automatically come down. So it doesn't have to press a button to do that. It'll basically automatically do that. And we have all sorts of features like that that help take the mental strain off of the driver. And this we also have one driver. Some people run two drivers and we believe that one driver definitely helps because there is a bit of a communication cost between the two drivers and that does slow them down sometimes. Yeah, that's great. I think the discussion between one driver and two drivers is something that's really well, highly debated. And I think you guys really show that one driver can be successful. Now, one last question. There's still a couple months before the San Diego Regional Championship in March and the qualifica later qualification matches. What future improvements are you looking to add to this already great and fast robot? So um, in terms of mechanical improvements, uh, we're probably going to mostly keep things the same. Um, uh, we might make some things easier to swap out on the robot just because stuff does break. But um, other than that, I think it's probably going to stay similar. And then on like uh, some more software side, we want to definitely focus on reliability because especially towards the end of today, we ran into some issues that we didn't foresee and those have caused um, us to miss samples and all sorts of stuff. So we definitely want to fix those issues. Um, and then additionally, we want to have uh, even more vision and we believe that we can even automate even more tasks that the driver needs to do. And we're just going to try to keep pushing those sample times down. All right, thank you so much, Team 23251 Triple Fall, for this amazing robot with their limelight detection and all of these cool features. And reporting from Fun Robotics Networks, this is Rahul, and catch you next time on Behind the Box. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. 
Go ad free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the join button below to get started. The new Robit system by Anymark can reduce complexity and enable robust builds. Parts align to a common one half inch grid, simplifying construction and allowing alignment of both structure and motion components. Robits enables teams to always have the parts they need to complete a build. Head on over to Anymark.com slash Robits to learn more in order today.